Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Kenny, can you hear us? Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Well, I still need to, to read in the whole. Can you guys hear us now? Yep. Yep, we can hear you. Thank you. Can you just put yourself back on mute? Thanks. All right. Perfect. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, June 14th. Um, but th this meeting of the Bridgewater Zoning Board, Board of Appeals will be conducted via re remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded. Within 48 hours, we will post a link of the recording on the town website or the other town social media. Um, my name and the other members participating, my name is Brian Heath, Chair, Anna Klimas, Vice Chair, Dan Greenberg, Member. Uh, and again, during this meeting, all votes will be taken as a roll call vote. Following Bridgewater Town staff are also participating remotely. Uh, Robert Ruley, Director of Community and Economic Development, and Steve Solari, the Building Commander. This time, everyone's mic is muted. The board's mics will be unmuted throughout the whole meeting. And as it appears on the agenda, the uh, project representative's mics will be unmuted. If the project is a public hearing and allows for public comment, we ask that you use the chat feature to ask your question by listing your name and address and your question. The chair will recognize all questions in order. You can also use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu, and you'll be unmuted when the chair recognizes you again. Please state your name and address before asking your question. If you're on the phone, you can use the uh, star nine, uh, raise your hand to ask a question. This time we will start the meeting. We have the Kenny's on. It's a uh, from looking for a variance, a side setback variance. My application has been filed for a pool. So um, at this time, I just want to first state that so everybody's aware, and mainly you, the Kinneys, that we as the board are limited in what we can do under mass law. You know, we don't get to, to decide in our own fashion. The, the applicant needs to provide us with a, a reason for this, a hardship. A lot of the times it's it's the land, you know, it's the topography of the land, it falls off or something. Um, certain, certain things about the land, the soil, the type of soil, whatever it is, that'll create a hardship that if we went with the bylaws as they are written, it would be the financial or or some other hardship. And, and doing so by granting a variance, it, it's not going to nullify or substantially degrade the intent of the of the um, bylaw or, and there's no detriment to the public. But the one thing that I would, would stress on you that I, what we as a board is to, to really need, because I was looking at the application and it seems like, it, I don't know, it got cut off when I was reading. It just says also the locate, and then it cut off. So I didn't get the whole understanding as to the, the hardship. So if you would just explain what you're looking to do and help us understand uh, why the board can grant you a variance. Mr. Heath, before the Kenny speak, I just want to mention two things. There's no one else in the waiting room. Everyone that's participating in the meeting is in, is in the room right now. And uh, you were provided some uh, supporting documents from a butters yesterday by Nicole. We did have uh, a butter walk in a uh, letter today uh, supporting the Kennedy's application that came from Stephen and Karen Belsky at 10 Upland Drive. So I just want that on the record that we did receive that notice or that letter as well. Okay, thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Take it away. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Sorry for the uh, application mix up, I guess. Was that just on your copy or did everyone seem to have that uh, issue with uh, our documentation? Uh, look real quick. I just, uh, it was in a PDF that was sent to me. So hmm. it just okay. kind of cut off. No worries. No Sorry. worries. No worries. Um, did you happen to get the uh, the PDFs of the plans? Yes. 
Yes. He did as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thanks everyone for uh, meeting with us. We appreciate this opportunity to uh, speak in front of you guys. Um, as you can tell from the, uh, the plans provided, uh, we live on a uh, pretty irregular shaped lot um, with the triangular shape in the background that becomes uh, pretty drastic on the, on the rear end of the property. Um, with under the, the guidelines of the, uh, the zoning board currently, um, that, 20, that 20 foot marker uh, really comes to a uh, extreme point in the back, um, on the back property line. Uh, so to, to, to manipulate the pool, oh, there's Lucas. This is our um, engineer joining on. He texted, he just was having trouble getting into um, Zoom. Thank you. Oh, okay. And uh, so, so the irregular shape of the uh, the lot is uh, kind of forcing us to move the pool extremely close to the house. If you were to, I don't even know if we can actually fit it within the 20 foot guideline. Um, also in the rear end of the property is a, is a well, an irrigation well. Um, so to keep everything in um, its proper location, uh, we've come up with the uh, proposed plan. Mr. Kenny, did you want your engineer to speak to your- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucas, you're on mute. Yeah, if you can. So Lucas, if you just oh. identify yourself, name- Is that better? Yeah, yeah your name, your- uh, firm and address, please. Sure. Uh, for the record, my name is Lucas Klim from Klim Land Surveying. I'm a professional registered land surveyor in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, I performed the boundary survey and prepared the plan for the Kennys. Um, I don't know what, sorry, I'm a little late here. My internet connection's not the greatest, but um, just to rehash maybe what they had already gone over, um, the unique shape of this lot, that triangular pie type shape that we have here um, is really what's causing the, the necessity for the variance. When you offset the um, 20 foot side yard setbacks that are required, um, what happens is it really narrows down any buildable area that we have here, um, combined with the location of that irrigation well and the 20 foot minimum, uh, 10 foot minimum off of that, it, it really reduces the area that we can place the pool. So um, that unique shape of the lot is what I believe is the, the main hardship for the variance. Um, I'm not sure if they had talked about uh, the support, the um, substantial detriment to the public good, but I believe they have letters of support from the uh, most affected abutter as well as um, other neighbors. So I don't think that should be too much of an issue. And then, um, the intent and purpose of the bylaw, I believe um, those dimensional intensity requirements were more than likely intended for structures um, as this is an accessory kind of use for a pool. I, I believe the 10 foot setback would still, you know, kind of meet that intent of not in encroaching on, on the neighbor. I don't know if we have any questions I can answer. Yeah, hey, hey Lucas. Um, Looking at the set of the plans and, you know, as, as you kind of put out, a pool is a permitted accessory structure. So we have to look at it as still it's a structure. Um, and it looks from the drawings, if everything's proportioned, that it would fit within this the space. That would, that would not require. So unless the backside of the, to the, if, if you're looking from the, from the road and you're looking at the left side of where the pool is i couldn't see anything on google maps where there was a big drop off or anything it looked pretty flat the land so i'm so we're kind of trying to figure out what really the hardship is because it looks like you could move the pool and put it within the the, the required setbacks i think as we start sliding the pool we'll call it easterly, southeasterly, easterly, we'll start encroaching on those 10 foot setbacks from the deck, the house and the irrigation well. So what they're trying to do is not have to 
rotate the pool as much and turn it and, and still maintain a, a small portion of the back, usable backyard before it gets into that really narrow wedge shape. So um, that that's the main purpose of putting it there. Whether you know that's up to you. Whether you you know we want to try and change the pool shape or or things like that to try and uh, yeah make it work otherwise. I guess that's my helpful question. It, in the future is if you have wells and things of that nature that you depict those on the plan. Yeah, I see the well, but that's way in the back. The well, the well's on the plan. Yeah, it's way in the back. It's so the means, well's right is labeled irrigation well. Right. That I don't see where well yeah. to get it back question. there, the pool back there, you'd be violating the setbacks anyway. So but where I'm looking, Lucas, is 10 foot off the house, even if you put the the pool sideways, it would fit. Or it would reduce to a very reasonable amount of variance that you would need. You know, looking for saying, well, we want it here because we want to save some of the yard. That's, as you know, that's that's not a hardship. That's a self-imposed hardship. But under the under the regulations, that's that's truly yep. not a hardship. Okay, so um, that, right we could now that, that's where go we're to the drawing back time. to the drawing board with the Kennys. My sure. other question too is there, um, and is we it... can try and. Go ahead. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, go ahead, Anna. Anna. Uh, my other question too is the shape of the pool. I understand that you know this may be the shape that you want, but in addition to a different location, would a different shape give you the the location that you want, but within the setback restrictions? Like I just haven't heard enough or seen enough to know that this would be sufficient to show that there is a hardship. If there's other alternatives, such as location as well as shapes that you could explore. We looked with um, when we spoke with the pool company into a rectangular shaped pool also, but with the rectangular shape, once you get to the back end of the property, you were going past the, to the 20 foot setback, just because the, the lot, you know, meets at a point in the back. There's not enough space back there for, to have the 18 feet of pool. It ends up being over the 20, the 20 foot setback, if that makes sense. Hey, Steve, question to you. Yeah. Does the apron around the pool count as the pool? It doesn't. It's nope. just the it's, actual. It's basically, we used to say water line, but technically it's not the water line because uh, pools have a, a four foot foundation, either concrete or steel that go around. So basically it's about the, about the steel line or, but the water line was the, like the common phrase was the water line had to be 20 feet. The difference between an above ground pool and an in ground pool is above ground pools can be 10 feet up the property so line, but uh, in ground pools have their structure that gets cemented in the concrete. So they are a structure. Yeah. Yeah, it's on a four four two. It's a permitted structure. So, and I will have to look up the. I don't. I don't think you have to be ten feet off the house. With the, I hate to say it, but because it, it brings it in close. But um, off off the deck, you mean? Yeah, off, off, off the, the deck. house. Because I, I, I think you're right, Steve. I, when I was doing, the I don't pool, think we have a bylaw that tells you how far a, a, a structure has to be off the house. That's the one strange bylaw that I, I know that uh, we that I've had in other towns that I don't think is in our bylaw. I don't think it is either. Oh, okay. I thought for sure it would have to be 10. I thought it was one of those so people don't jump off the house into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we were also told that it was um, the water's edge had to be 10 feet off the um, house, the structure. Some towns, because if, if you're asking the pool installer, that could be correct in other towns. And again, I would have to go back in our bylaws to double check um, to see uh, the distance, because I think it's, we're not going to have pool listed. We're going to have accessory structure distances off the house. Yeah, it only said pool as an accessory structure. Yeah. But even Maybe if we could, um, even you know, instead of closing the hearing, request a continuance to explore these options. Even Lucas, you know, spending it somewhere where the the variance, you know, where it's it's a little more and the variance is much smaller, you know, 
I think would be a better option to allow us to do this, but you know, we, we have to look at it as to what we're allowed to do. And right now, the hardest thing, well, the only thing we have to be able to do to grant a variance is, is find a hardship. And right now, we don't see a hardship um, because there's, there is, it, from the, the drawings, plenty of space to the, to the left that the pool could be moved over. And it, and it appears that it would be within the, the 20 foot setback. Uh, just, I just have a general question then for the board as well, too. So for um, in our thoughts and designing the pool set up the way we have it, um, it would allow us to have an exit from our house through our deck that would not enter the pool area at all. Uh, if the pool is to be moved and swung more onto the property, the way we'll have to fence that pool in, I, I feel, is to fence in the whole deck and every exit I have in the backside of the house to be included in that pool area. And, and again, that kind of that worries me as a homeowner, right? That, you know, I have three young children, three young <laughs> that, you know, and friends and family that, you know, I would like to have this pool properly secured you know, 100% in my like heart and soul, you know? So are you saying then that you'll be removing the other set of stairs that are on the deck now, the existing set? Uh, yeah, so if you're looking at the property, the stairs are currently on the uh, right side of the deck facing the trayer side. Yep, the patio and side. Yep. Proposed to move them to the, the back end and exit the house directly. And there's no other exit uh, on the back of the house except for what's on the deck, I assume a patio slider? Uh, no, uh, the, so there's a patio slider on that deck, and then uh, there's a an exit through the garage on the uh, right side of the house. But that exit does not come out into the pool area, the the your proposed fenced-in area. No, that 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 would be included. All all my exits would end up being included if we push that pool in the backyard. In my mind, um, you know, to 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 properly get it out there. I think that the fencing would have to basically trap everyone, which I mean, and, and, it yeah. probably it probably could work with some other right some some proper analysis of you know where you would have to fence it, but high level that makes me a little worried that you know. Yep. Steve, have Steve a you have a question? Yeah, we have a lot of pools that uh, go right from the house into the into the pool. Uh, the building code just requires that any uh, egress that goes from house to pool has to be alarmed. So yep. if you have a solid door that goes into the pool, it has to be alarmed. Slide, it would have to go on alarm. Um, you know, basically, if I'm just giving that scenario under the code. Yeah, we're, we're current, we are code. currently set up like that. I still worry about those little girls running out of the house. <laughs> and, and Matt, I hear you because yeah. I went through the same thing. The only thing I can say is having been on the board for as long as I have is that, again, that, that doesn't create the hardship. That's right. part of the yeah. onus yeah. of having a pool. Correct. Correct. And, and our, our parameters for granting variances, the, the biggest parameter is there has to be an established hardship. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's where we're having, having the, the issue is we can't really find it yet. Um, because again, from the from what you did provide, it looks as if the pool could be shifted a number of different ways and fit within that. I hear you. Um, yeah, we were going to have to. They have make these little fences that you you have broads, you drill holes around the pool and you put them in. Um, but that's unfortunately that's part of the onus of having a pool with a lot of other fences. So Lucas, are you suggesting you? And your app, your client might want to continue this. Uh, I believe we could ask for a continuance to at least explore these options in case you know we can configure and, and get a something that maybe works a little bit better and only needs you know less of a, a, a variance. Because yeah, even now, we, Lucas, when you when you if you put it in here and you put a, a four foot apron around it. Now you're, you're really within six feet of the property line. 
and, and, a, and a four foot apron isn't huge. To the apron. So, um, are you, you right. I don't want to speak for them, the, but if, if they're want to, um, please, sorry. Yeah. I, was say, yeah, I, I agree that if, if we could uh, keep this uh, file open. Okay. So you want to formally ask for a continuance? Please. All right. Um, would one of the other members care to make a motion to grant the continuance? Yeah, I'll make a motion to grant the continuance on this particular uh, project here. Um, Bob, when would when would you guys be ready ask. to hear this? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> 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 I don't have the calendar for the July meeting, but I can email everyone tomorrow morning with what the meeting date is. Okay. Would you be? Um, it's usually is it's. it's the second or the which which one is it for a second the is, on, is the 12th the 12th okay yep. so it's usually second and the fourth on there but i uh, but that would be the 12th all right would you be uh available on the 12th of july for a continuance yes. we can make that work okay so uh bob will email or have nicole email on um tomorrow what what the times is uh, again as you as you said i don't know how many other yeah. we have i don't at this time all right thank you i don't anticipate many all right so i just one of the i need to do roll roll call so the motion was made all those in favor you need a second oh yeah anna I'll sorry second it. all right all those in favor dan aye anna aye Myself, I. So the motion passes. Uh, we're going to continue until uh, July 12th. All right, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. time. Uh, Bob, do we have any other stuff no. for the meeting? Well, you have the, the approval of the minutes. Oh, yeah, we saw the. Um, If someone wanted to I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from May 24th. May 24th. What is it? May 24th? May, yep. May 24th. May 24th. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Dan? Aye. Anna? Aye. Myself, aye. The minutes have been approved. And okay. The last uh, item is. Just to make it easier for everyone, Nicole was suggesting that perhaps if each of you signed a few signature pages, then when a decision is made, then she can just get it out and you don't have to make a special trip in to sign it um, completely. Just this is for your convenience, not necessarily for ours. I vote yes. I make a motion to approve. Because I'm always the one coming in late and like you know on two wheels trying to get there on time before four o'clock. So, do, Bob, when when they sign, does it have to be signature all in the same signature page? No, no, we've done oh, okay. multiple signature pages. Oh yeah, because I always just drop mine in the mailbox. Yeah, so I mean, it will be you're you're not going to date it. You're just going to sign it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with it. And then one last thing, and because I know everyone wants to go, I mentioned before, you know, we've got a pretty comprehensive downtown revitalization initiative that's been kicked off. Uh, we've got another presentation to the town council on Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to start to do our public outreach. There's a dedicated website. We've had a short uh, three minute film produced. Uh, you're going to start to see a lot of uh, information about it. So uh, if it pleases this board, I'd be happy to do kind of the complete presentation for you at the next meeting. Um, I promise I won't bore you to death. I won't even make Mr. Solari come for the 90th time to hear the presentation. <laughs> I like it though, it's a good one. It's good. But I mean, it, it, entirely up to you, but you, you know, we've done it for the planning board. I mean, the council, I mean, it's, this is a pretty big effort um, and I'm pretty excited about it that if, I think I've now I've been here 105 days and I'm told that we've got more done in 105 days than we've gotten done the last 10 years. So hmm. I'm gonna keep that momentum going. And that's actually, that's a good point. And I believe you have too. So thank you for your hard work on that. 
and I'm excited about the project. So I'd be interested um, in hearing more about it as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, if it, for whatever reason the agenda gets busy, then you know we can do it another time. Um, I, I could send you all a link to former presentations, but then I don't know that I can trust you all to watch the whole thing. So if I do it here <laughs> while you're here, I can. Well, with Steve's uh, Steve saying it's like a, a must see. It's sort of like the new Avatar movie. No, it's listen. Uh, like we can do it, and and then I'll bring a um, trail mix, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very good information. Very good. Let's just say that. All right. If there's nothing else, you can so we can make a motion to adjourn if you'd like. If I'll someone would a, like, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? second. Oh. oh, no, I was going to say, well, I can't do the second. So I'll second. Um, all right. All in favor? Dan? Aye. aye. Anna? Myself? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. And good night, everyone. Thank have you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Take care.